Welcome back to Z Code System here on YouTube. Drew coming to you, and today we're going to talk once more about the UEFA Euro 2020 tournament, which is going on right now in Europe. And we are ready for the quarterfinal stage, which will be kicking off on Friday, July 2nd, and continuing to July 3rd on Saturday the following day as we get ready for the semifinals. And eight teams are right now looking for qualification to those semifinals. If you're like me, you've been watching the tournament all game long, or every game, and uh, you've been having a good time because we've seen some really good fixtures, especially in the round of 16, which just finished last night with England punching their ticket to the quarterfinals with a 2-0 win over Germany, and we saw some great games with France going out at the hands of Switzerland, and we also saw um, Port uh, excuse me, Czech Republic defeating um, defeating. The Czech Republic defeating the Netherlands 2-0 in a really good game as well. So we've got a lot of good football coming up in the quarterfinals. And, you know, we might have an unlikely team pick up uh, the Euro 2020 tournament trophy when we get down to it. So, guys, welcome back to YouTube. Like I said before, uh, great to have you here with us as we bring you another set of picks for the games here on Z Code System. As always, go over to Z Code System. There's the blog there. Wrote it uh, earlier today. Go over there, read up on that, see uh, what I've written about the games. I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, that I wrote and, and then add to it here as well. So you can always go over there and uh, get those great picks if you don't want to watch the whole video. And also, you can uh, go to YouTube or stay here on YouTube if you're already here and get our other picks and our other videos with baseball and uh, the like going up every week here on the YouTube page. So we're talking specifically about the quarterfinals. There is the blog there, and you can see England, who won yesterday for the first time since 1966 against Germany, and they are now tournament favorites to pick up the Euro 2020 trophy. So uh, let's, before we get onto this, and you can see there the first game we're going to talk about, but let's go, before we look at this, to my favorite sports book, online sports book, uh, Bet365, to look at the current odds for the teams to win this tournament. All right, so there are the current odds of uh, today, which is the 30th of June. Those are the odds for the uh, teams to win the tournament, our last eight teams. England are now favorites, uh, with France being knocked out of the tournament by Switzerland. Uh, they are favorites at plus 187. Spain coming in at plus 30, or excuse me, plus 300. Uh, after a what I would say was a very poor start to the tournament, they've really turned it on. Um, Italy, the team that I backed pre-tournament, uh, they go in to the tournament uh, quarterfinal stage at plus 400. Then we've got Belgium plus 700, Denmark at plus 1000, Switzerland bringing it up at plus 2500, and then Czech Republic plus 2500, and the Ukraine are the long shots at plus 3300. So we get this uh, these updated odds uh, from yesterday. Like I say, England are now favorites. Um, they were second favorites, third favorites for most of the tournament and before the tournament started as well. Uh, but now they jump in front uh, following that win against Germany and France's loss uh, to Switzerland. Um, if you look at uh, the odds here, we've seen Italy kind of fall back um, a little bit with Spain jumping ahead of them because we're going to see Italy playing Belgium in a game that, you know, I wish was actually the final uh, of the tournament. Um, that would have been a great uh, final if these two teams would have played in, the, in it, uh, but we're going to get that in the quarterfinals. Now, keeping in mind, England are playing in the lower half of the bracket uh, in the knockout stage, which is a, well, once that Germany game finished yesterday, is a much easier path to the final. Um, they've got Ukraine now, and then the winner of that game will take on either Denmark or the Czech Republic. Uh, Italy, uh, Belgium, Spain, uh, and Switzerland. That is the upper half of the bracket and a much more difficult bracket uh, for those teams to navigate. Uh, once they get through their current games, they will have a very difficult semifinal and um, uh, a semifinal that, in my opinion, is far more difficult than what we would see in the lower half of the bracket. All right, let's get over to the Soccer Buddy tool because I'm going to use that today as usual uh, to showcase the picks for the upcoming quarterfinal round.
Okay, guys, here are our picks for the quarterfinal round. Now, I'm going to talk through these, and I'm going to give you some... Uh, obviously, you have the, the soccer buddy picks there and predictions. I'm going to give you some different uh, thoughts and ideas and um, some picks uh, that I think uh, are going to happen. I'm going to go against at least one of these picks right here uh, on your screen um, as I talk through these. Now, I'm going to just click on the hot trends to see if there's anything else. Nope, no hot trends there uh, for this. Uh, for these games uh, coming up on Friday. Now, these games are going to kick off on Friday afternoon European time and continue on into the evening. As you can see there, we have uh, American Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so these games are going to be coming to you around lunchtime and uh, at the uh, middle to end of the afternoon. Uh, let's start with that Spain-Switzerland game because that's going to be the first game that's going to be played. We've got uh, Spain as heavy favorites there going up against Switzerland with a score prediction of 2-1. Now, Spain started the Euros very, very slowly. They picked up a 0-0 draw against Sweden in a game that they just couldn't break down Sweden's defense uh, before going on to a 1-1 draw with Poland, and then they absolutely thrashed Slovakia 5-0. Uh, which set up Spain for one of the one of the games of the tournament so far uh, against Croatia in the round of 16. Um, they were leading 3-1 going into the ga uh, going late into the game, and Croatia sprung into life in those last 10 minutes to equalize 3-3 and send the game into extra time. But Spain did win it 5-3 uh, with two goals in extra time. Uh, Alvaro Morata is in great form, so if you're looking for a goal scorer, a potential goal scorer, you might want to back Alvaro Morata. Now, Swede, uh, excuse me, Switzerland, um, they go into this game having drawn uh, to start the tournament against Wales before losing 3-0 to Italy. Uh, they then got through to the round of 16 with a 3-1 win over Turkey. They also played one of the games of the tournament, beating France on penalties 5-4 in a fantastic match. Uh, that game ended the 90 minutes at 3-3. Switzerland had taken a 1-0 lead early on. Uh, and then had the chance to put the game away at 2-0 early in the second half, but Ricardo Rodriguez had his penalty saved, and France came back to score three times uh, to make it 3-1. Uh, with Switzerland nearly out of the tournament uh, with just five minutes left to play, they scored twice to force extra time. So what a game that was. Uh, Spain did concede goals we saw to Croatia. Will they do the same to Switzerland? I don't really think so. I think Spain will tighten up uh, at the back, and I think they will get the goals needed to win this game. I do like that 2-1 scoreline uh, with Spain edging Switzerland in a very close game with over 2.5 goals. So I do like that scoreline for that game. But I do not like that 2-2 scoreline for the Italy versus Belgium game. Now, Italy are coming into this game having won against Austria in extra time. It took them extra time to get the win. It was 2-1 with all three goals scored in that overtime period. Uh, Italy were almost out of this tournament. They were almost uh, eliminated, uh, but a uh, slight marginal offside was given to Austria or given against Austria uh, following a, a goal by a Marco, Aron a Mar Marco Arontovic um, that would have given Austria the win late in that game. So Italy were thanking their lucky stars a bit uh, to get that game into extra time where they eventually won in another very good game. Um, Italy have not conceded a goal in their last 12 matches in 90 minutes. Uh, yes, they did give up a goal to Austria, but that came in extra time. So we've seen 12 straight games played by the Italians without them conceding a goal during regulation. Uh I could see them keeping another clean sheet. This is a brilliant defensive team. Yes, Belgium have some great players. This is a golden generation for Belgium, and this is likely their last tournament to win silverware with that golden generation. And once that golden generation is gone, I think Belgium is going to be very, very poor uh, for, for some time to come. Yes, they have some good players, but they're aging. And this game, they're likely to be without two of their best players, as Eden Hazard and Kevin De Bruyne have both picked up injuries uh, in Belgium's win over Portugal. So they are, at the moment, reports as of Wednesday the 30th, they are unlikely to play in the game. And I think that's a huge blow to them. Yes, they still have Romelu Lukaku, but consider Ram Romelu Lukaku plays his club football for Inter Milan in Italy. And a lot of those defenders that play for Italy are very familiar with Lukaku. And I think they can shut him down. I like Italy to win this game under 2.5 goals, potentially a 1-0 or 2-0 victory. Belgium were hanging on at times against Portugal late in that game. Uh, they needed uh, uh, they needed um, 
Thibaut Courtois' uh, goal post to uh, help keep out Portugal as uh, the Portuguese hit the post late in the game, just a couple inches to the left, and they would have had a goal and equalized. But uh, luckily for Belgium, they were able to, uh, to keep the Portuguese out and move on. I think that their tournament is going to come to an end. I like the Italians a lot. Like I keep saying, I, I, I put uh, some money on the Italians to win this tournament, uh, pre-tournament, and I think they're going to come good with a victory here. Punch the ticket to the semifinals where they're going to play the winner of Spain versus Switzerland. All right, let's take a look at the third, Saturday, the third, that is, uh, for the two games in the quarterfinals on that day. And we're going to get that there, and you can see them right in front of you. Now let's start with the game on the bottom there, the early game, which is Denmark and the Czech Republic. Um, man, I love this Denmark team. I really have gotten behind Denmark uh, in this tournament following the near tragic collapse of Christian Eriksen, uh, which occurred in their first game against Finland, which ended up in a 1-0 loss. Um, and you know we there were a lot of expectations uh, that Denmark would just not be up to things after that happened, but this is a team that are uh, are thriving now. They are, uh, you know, they've got this Cinderella uh, atmosphere, the Cinderella feeling, which could carry over into a win in the quarterfinals and potentially a win in the semifinals to take them into the final of the tournament at Wembley. I really like what they're doing. They're playing great. They've scored four goals in each of their last two games. They put four past... Um, uh, Russia to get into the round of 16, and they put four past Wales, winning 4-0 in the round of 16. So I like this team to get a win. Uh, they do have one injury, uh, one significant injury, and that is Yusuf Polson, uh, one of their best strikers. He missed the last game due to fitness issues. Not sure if he's going to be back, but the good news for uh, manager Kasper Holmand is that uh, striker Kasper Dolberg uh, stepped up in the last game, scored twice as he came on for Polson or came into the team for Polson. Uh, and we could see him continue his hot streak. Uh, I've, I've never been a big fan of Dolberg at Nice uh, and Ajax before that, but he uh, he, he really showed something uh, in that game. And it's, uh, coincidentally, I was uh, texting a friend talking about how I, I, I just thought how worthless Dolberg was uh, as a striker. Uh, not one minute later, he's scoring his first goal of the game with a beautiful strike there against Wales. I like Denmark to win this game. I'm not sure if it's going to really be a 3-0 scoreline. I could see it being 2-0 with the Czechs keeping it close. Keep in mind, the Czechs do have Patrick Schick in the team. He has scored four goals at the tournament. He's second in goals scored. And uh, he's really been the leader of the team. I think he's scored, uh, I think the team's only scored five goals at the tournament. He scored four of them. If Denmark can keep him quiet, then I think Denmark will be able to get through to the semifinals and continue the Cinderella run uh, after the near death of Eric Eriksson, who uh, uh, collapsed on the pitch on that first day of the tournament for the Danes. All right, now England taking on Ukraine. England coming off a massive emotional and mental high of finally defeating the Germans uh, first time since 1966 at the World Cup when England won the 1966 World Cup. Uh, and that final again was against Germany. Uh, they take on Ukraine, who really, uh, you know, they, they got through to the round of 16 uh, against all expectations uh, after a poor display in the round of 16. Um, Ukraine picked up just three points uh, in the group stage. I mean, I, I should have said a uh, poor display in the, in the group stage, not the round of 16. Uh, Ukraine only picked up three points in the group stage uh, with a win coming against North Macedonia. And they were the last team of... Uh, the round of 16 teams to reach the uh, the knockout stages. Uh, they had the fewest points of any team to qualify for the knockout stages. Um, now, they did pick up a win against Sweden um, in extra time 2-1 uh, on Wednesday night. Now, or excuse me, on Tuesday night. Uh, let's take that with a grain of salt because Ukraine were playing um, the weakest team um, the weakest team to, to win their group in the group stage. Uh, Sweden just, they, they struggled to get going. They really didn't show up for that game. And Ukraine made the most of their chances uh, to win that. But it did take extra time where they won 2-1. Uh, England, like I say, they go into this game, their favorites to win the tournament. And I like England to win this game. England have not uh, conceded a goal 
uh, or they've not conceded very many goals uh, in the tournament. If you look at uh, what they've done so far, they've gone four games without allowing opponents to score. I don't see Ukraine getting on the score sheet here. Ukraine are not great in attack. Yes, they did win 2-1 against uh, Sweden on Tuesday night. But this is a team that's going to be coming up against one of the best defenses at the tournament. And I think England are going to continue to keep uh, goals out. England are playing with uh, two, basically two defensive midfielders to protect their back four. And it's working very well so far. So I see England getting a goal or two to get past Ukraine and move on to the next round. So uh, that is my pick for that game. Now, before we go this week, uh, we're going to take a look at the playoff simulator, which has been updated. So if you are a Z code system member, go over there and check that out. But let's take a look at the uh, playoff simulator here. And I've actually already run it. Um, so you can see, and I'm just going to make that box a little bit smaller there. There we go. Uh, so we can see where we are at here with the quarterfinals starting. Uh, we have uh, Denmark taking on Czech Republic, as I said before, England and Ukraine. We've got Spain and Switzerland, and we've got Italy and Belgium. So you can see here our predictions for our uh, Z-Code uh, system playoff simulator. And um, in a second, I'll, I'll run just one more uh, or maybe two more and, and show you a little bit of differences in these. But we've got England coming out on top in a final versus Spain. That is our prediction uh, from the simulator. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to change things a bit. So I use the upset level of average. I'm going to use the low upset level and see if there are any differences, any changes to the playoffs and the simulation. So we're going to hit simulate uh, once more, and we've got a low upset level, as I said. And of course, if you are a Z-Code system member, go over to the VIP. You can use this tool, and you can use it for the NHL, which is uh, currently in the uh, in the playoffs, as well as the NBA. Uh, but you can use this for the different sports that we uh, showcase at Z-Code System. Now, the upset simulator has changed a few things, um, mostly just that uh, Denmark-Czech Republic game. We've seen a different result for that. But again, we see England beating Spain in the final with our upset level at low. Now let's simulate one more time and we're going to take a look at a high upset level and we'll see if we have any other uh, alterations to this uh, based on um, a high upset level. Now our last two upset levels uh, we saw England and Spain in the final uh, but this time we're seeing a different outcome. We're seeing uh, well, at least a different final. We're seeing Italy playing England in the final, well, high-scoring final, according to the simulator, of 3-2 with England again winning. Now, this is very interesting that the playoff simulator has picked England to win uh, each of the uh, simulations that we've done. So um, that might be telling you something. You might want to put a little bit of money, a little bit of scratch there on England to pick up the win at the Euro 2020 tournament. And uh, boy, football would definitely be coming home. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they would be uh, having a public holiday here in the UK to celebrate that if it were to happen. All right, guys, that's all for me this week here on Zico System, talking about the Euros. Uh, the game's coming up again on Friday and Saturday, and then we're going to have the semifinals shortly after that. And I will be definitely coming back to you with a blog and video here on YouTube to talk up those games. So, guys, like and subscribe to the channel, and also comment below. Let us know what you think. Who will win this tournament? Who will win the Euro 2020 tournament? And uh, let us know what you want to see coming up in the coming weeks here on Zico System. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon from Zico System.